on today's episode. Back again with the Fun Cub that I picked up recently for a bargain price. It may have been a bargain price, but it's been rather a pain in the lower regions, to be frank. There's been several issues with it, mainly due to the fact that it, it had never flown, and whoever set it up didn't do it properly. The servos weren't centred, the motor wasn't even spinning in the correct direction, and a few other things. Initially, I was flying it using this receiver, and it worked okay. But recently, I decided to use the original receiver that came with the model, which I've modified, and I'll leave a link up there, modified to read out the battery voltage via the telemetry link. So, 11.7 volts. And I was so pleased that I got that working that, um, to be honest, I didn't double check everything before it was flown again. And when it was flown, it displayed the most bizarre phenomenon, which I will demonstrate for you now. Let's throttle up. And now when I move the elevator, go full up elevator, the motor stops. Conversely, if I throttle right up, you can see the elevator come up. Anything over half throttle, up she goes. How bizarre. First thoughts then were that it was possibly some strange mix that was set up in the radio. I'm as guilty as others in taking shortcuts when setting up the model. I copied the settings from another model so that all my switches were as I like them. It was quite possible then that there was a problem with some mix that I was unaware of. However, using the servo display, we can see that there's the, the throttle. And at no point does it affect the elevator, which is on channel two at the top there. That this bar here does not move. Conversely, if I move the elevator, it's not displaying. Perhaps I ought to unplug the model. <laughs> Telemetry lost. Yes, dear. So, Seven minutes. So, yes, with the throttle right up, I can move the elevator and the throttle bar is not moving, which tells us that it is not a problem with the transmitter setting. What then could it be? I swapped it back for the original receiver and the problem went away. Clearly, then, it is a problem with the receiver that came with the model. Let's take a closer look. You can see here the modification that I made to connect the wire to measure the battery voltage. The affected channels two and three are here, so I can see here that there's, that there's nothing on that side. Just checking my meter there. I wouldn't expect to see any resistance between the channel pins, which are along here, clearly on the power rails, they're going to be all joined together. But here, for example, channel one and channel two, I'm getting about six meg ohms. Similarly, if we go up here, five, six meg ohms. The culprits then between two and three 400 ohms. Well, that's not right, is it? And if I measure it the other way around, 400 ohms. What on earth could be going on then? It's clearly not short circuit, and it's clearly not 5 megs. We're going to need to take a closer look at the circuit board around this area here. This is the chip that actually drives the channel outputs. Let's see if we can find anything suspicious around there. Examining around the chip then, I'm not seeing anything I don't like on the legs of the chip there. But my attention is drawn to this little resistor array labelled 201. 
201 then is going to be 200 ohms and 2 lots of 200 is 400. And what is it that we see here? Looks suspiciously to me like a solder bridge. I'll see if I can get a closer view of that for you. Yes, I think you can clearly see that the center two connections there have a solder bridge. We're going to have to try and remove that. To attempt to remove the solder bridge then what I'm first going to try is putting some additional flux onto the board and then using this solder wick, yes solder, I kid you not, I guess somewhere in Covina, California, somebody's got a drawer full of L's they're not using. And with that we'll try and lift off the excess solder from that bridged joint. Let's see how we get on. Applying then some flux. Let's see if our solder wick is going to do the job for us. Looks like it's done the job and removed it, but there's a lot of, obviously, flux and stuff there. Let's give the board a clean. Yes, I think we've removed the offending bridge there and there's still plenty of solder on the pads. Let's fire the receiver up again and see if the issue has been resolved. The moment of truth then for this little fly sky guy. Have we resolved the problem? Let's throttle up. And no reaction on the elevator, as we'd hoped. Uh, and in reverse, as it were. The elevator not have any effect on the throttle now. Hopefully then all of the gremlins are now out of this guy and the next time out I can actually enjoy flying it. Thanks for watching.